Alright, so thank you so much for staying. I know it's rainy. I know it's Saturday. I know y'all have things to do. But you are, when I promise you, you are in for a treat. You have no idea until they get ready to open their mouth. Because you have a really exciting panel here that's really going to talk to you about their technology journey. You know, from being kids, what they majored in, what they were interested in when they were teenagers or not interested in. Um, and how it led to careers and entrepreneurship no like him? in technology and even raising money in technology because that's a huge possibility as well. Just like so you get a better on. understanding of Just go ahead. exactly what your girls are going through, the training that they're getting, and the path that it can take them on. So I'm going to start with um, so their bios and um, do some introductions there, and then I'm going to open up the floor to some questions with them, and then any questions that you may have um, they have an opportunity to access as well. Sounds good? Could you set the bar a little lower though for us? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 The bar's so high now, you know. Oh, whatever. Wait till I read these bios. Especially the one we're talking about set the bar low. <laughs> Alright, so. McKeever Codwell, which is my man to the I did. I, I come short. I took like a whole foot. Okay, okay. Well, McKeever Codwell II, aka Mac. Um, is a Baltimore native that attended Morgan State University where he majored in computer science. In 2006, at the age of 19, he joined a co-op program with the Department of Defense, gaining his top secret security clearance. I'm afraid of you. <laughs> <laughs> Later, he went on to become a government contractor doing software development in multiple computer languages and working for several small and large computer companies such as Northrop Grumman, Booz Allen Hamilton, and in October of 2009, Matt decided to start his own tech startup, Given.to, along with two friends from college. The Given.to team has been through two accelerator programs, and the panel will actually tell you a little bit more about what accelerator programs are. There's a lot that are popping up in Miami, and how to take advantage of those. Um, two accelerator programs, Accelerate Baltimore, followed by the New Day Accelerator, which many of you probably, probably saw on CNN mm -hmm. quite a few years ago. Um, Black, is, what kind of Black America 4, I believe it was, uh, Silicon Valley. Uh, followed by a new me accelerator and working hard to give Given.to a great product. Mac has been a guest on Huffington Post Live several times, and Given.to has been featured in many media outlets such as USA Today, Washington Post, BET, CNN, Headline News, Black Enterprise, and many more. Currently, Mac is working hard to make Given CEO a success and change the diversity issues within technology. And we're so happy to have him here in Miami this weekend. So, uh, so my husband just happened to have in Miami, which worked out perfectly. <laughs> Uh, Christine Johnson is dedicated to diversifying the technolo technology entrepreneurial landscape via community building, education, resources, and access to key industry leaders. Determined to make her vision a reality, Christine combined her entrepreneurial skills and passion for technology to found Diversa Tech in 2011. Is this based on the Maryland? Yeah. Okay. Um, her work has been recognized by the Wall Street Business Journal, Silicon Valley News, Black Enterprise, Tech Cocktail, and others. She's been interviewed and featured on various national uh, platforms, including participation at South by Southwest Interactive, which is kind of like the mecca for technology that takes place in Austin um, every single year in March, I believe. Brian Brackeen, <coughs> we go way back, right? <laughs> uh, Brian Brackeen actually is here in Miami. Um, he is the founder of Kairos. Um, in Miami, Florida, Kairos is an innovative facial recognition company garnering significant interest in the past several months. Their products, um, Kairos On Clock and Kairos API, use facial recognition to help their clients surprise and delight. And they definitely surprise employees, right? Exactly. Um, the service has launched, um, was only launched a year ago, and Kairos has, has 250 plus customers in its pipeline. Those 250 companies represent over 1.7 million users. Kairos' explosive growth has, was recently noticed by the Wall Street Journal, and it was named one of the top 20 startups in the U.S. Brian and his technological, um, technological team at Apple in Cupertino, California, where he designed solutions that manage Apple's workforce across the globe. Brian also held senior positions at IBM, 
Comcast, Comcast and consulted for the New York Metropolitan Museum of Art, General Motors, PetSmart, Scott Trade, and others. Brian is most proud of his work with underserved youth in Miami via internships, teaching classes, and one-on-one -on -one support. He believes that technology and coding skills can break the cycle of poverty that grips so many of our communities. To demonstrate his commitment, Paris donates 1% of their profits to youth programs in Miami from 2016 on forward. Um, Brian has a daughter who is 12 and he likes to say she's going on 22 and is a rabid Miami Heat and Philadelphia Eagles fan. We'll just, we'll remember the Heat part for that course. Brianisha is a software engineer with vast experience in technical skills and works for Harris Corporation, an international communication and information technology company. As a junior software engineer, she develops and enhances cutting edge software in C, C++, uh, Java, and other products in the wireless products group. She is a National Society of Black Engineers, Society of Women Engineers, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, Incorporated. <laughs> I just had a feeling I was going to get that. And uh, Bill Miller, the Gates Millennium Scholar alumni. Renisha has a Bachelor's of Software Engineering from Auburn University. That is our panel. Here's the All right, so I'm just going to jump right into the questions. Uh, this first question is for all of you guys, and I'll start with my computer and we'll work our way down. Can you just tell them a little bit of how you got started? Like, what was your first introduction to, to technology? Okay, so what do you mean? I guess my first introduction to technology, uh, I actually still remember this. I was in second grade, elementary school, and they were doing this experimental computer class. They wanted to see if they should start going to computer classes in elementary school. I took that and I loved it. And ever since then, all through my educational career, whenever there was like an engineering project, a competition, or after school program, uh, my parents always put me in those. I always, I always wanted to. So I was always in the engineering club. When I was in high school, I was in the robotics club. You know, and, um, those kind of things built me up towards where I am now. You know, when I went to college, I got into computer science by accident. I didn't even know what computer science was. I didn't know what the program was. Uh, I thought I was going to build robots for NASA, and so he told me if you wanted to do robots, you do robots. I got into it, um, found out they made a lot of money, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to do That's kind of how I got my start. I kind of had a similar start. It was kind of for ninth grade for me. We kind of like, got our first computer, and I kind of put it together and took it apart, put it back together again, and that's when I realized that I was very interested in it. And um, kind of my guidance counselor, in high school, she was like, well, you're good at math and science, so this is kind of a field that you should go into. And I actually kind of went into um, the hardware and software side of things. So it took me until college till I realized that I really just liked the software side of things and didn't too much care for the hardware side of things. Wow. I'm not smart as anybody else in this panel. So I went through school all, you know, mostly Fs and Ds. Um, just socially promoted all the way through school. My dad brought home a computer, and one day I'm like, oh my god, and this is it, this is that thing. I was spent hours and hours and hours. And so that's really how I got my start. <laughs> so my story is unique because I, I didn't gravitate towards technology at all as a child. That was my brother's thing. He did programming. Uh, I didn't even play computer games. It kind of annoyed me. I feel like that's what annoyed me. Um, so, really, my, my first entree was working for an organization that funded tech startups around my late 20s. Um, and by being in that environment, and at that point in time, you know, the, the innovative landscape was opening up significantly in, in a number of ways. So, I really gravitated towards really cutting edge um, technologies and platforms, and I got more into the advocacy of this work with making sure that, you know, more individuals that look like me for participating in the space and able to be successful. All right. So um, I would love you guys to actually answer the question, why should black girls code? Why should black girls code? I think, I'm not going to say black girls, I'm going to say why anybody should code. I think anybody should code because the way the future is going, the way businesses are going, all the things that we do today include some kind of technological component there's some kind of computer involved, there's some kind of coding involved. And that is industry that's exploding. And one thing that I feel blessed and fortunate is that I'm in this industry because I would never be without a job. True. Ever. 
Like, there's so many jobs for developers, Google can't find enough developers. And you see how I think about that. Google and Apple can't find enough developers. But they're trying to find out where developers are. They're trying to find out where people know how to code on. That's going to be the future. Soon, every, there's going to come a day in time where everybody's going to need to know some form of coding. It's at, at, at a basic level. And because of that, to get started now, early, you know, be able to have those tools. If I had those tools when I was in elementary school and middle school, by the time I got to college, it would be dangerous. But also the ability to code, you have, you have the ability to build something. Whenever you can build things, you have the ability to market yourself and sell a product. That means you have the ability to make a business within yourself, by yourself, cheap. And if you can build a website that sells hair products, you can start your business and make money. In middle school, that's, that's powerful. I think the ability to code gives you a lot of power. So I definitely agree with like, the potential for this whole build. There's just limitless. Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit more why black girls should be good. Um, mainly because um, our instincts um, is, is very diverse. I mean, we don't have, I don't see many of us in the field, period. And um, so we just kind of have a different instinct and a different outlook on things when you're in a group, in a collaborative group with pretty much mostly males. And it's just that we need to be there to kind of represent, so. I think there's like two sides to that like So for the, the black girl, it's problem solving abilities. To code is to solve problems all day long. And then that ability translates to a lot of different parts of your areas of life. So that's very, very positive. On the company side of things, why companies should have black girls code, um, it's proven one that more diversity in your coders leads to better code and better companies. And also companies that are more diverse are more successful and more profitable as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it works on both sides. So I think it's very important, um, and I, I really push forward because like the keyword said, it is it's power. So I recall um, showing the age that I am. I recall growing up, you know, my mom told me, if you can answer a phone and you can type, you always have a job, you know, because that was that time, right? So at this point, in looking at the, the landscape and opportunities for our young people, that's where I'm at. Just like the fever said, there, there is no recession for COVID. You will always eat. You know, when I go to different events and I talk to young people, and of course they're thinking, how am I going to go to college? Or can I afford college? Can I look, maybe I should look into a paid internship. I'm always like, take your time and learn to code because you will be able to sustain yourself in your and beyond. So I think it's a tool of empowerment and opportunity because, again, you can do it. And it's also the diversity of the thought as far as being on a team, like you mentioned. So there's just, the, the world is just so open and, and full of opportunity if you have that, that skill to know those languages. Just to, just to show you the power of it, right? So she talked about 19, I got the call with the government, right? When I was 20, I was a junior in college and I dropped out and got my first job in North Carolina. My first job right out of college doing software development and uh, database development, I was making seventy thousand a year. Within a year of that, I was making hundred thousand a year, no college degree. That is the power of being able to code can offer. Can you all talk a little bit about your your technical experience? Like, where did you get your training from? Like, were you self-taught? Did you go to like I know you just said that you dropped out of school, but so where did you get the training from in order to be able to uh, track a, a company like North Carolina? So I got my traditional training at Morgan State, uh, learning some of the basics in C and C++. <coughs> but actually, after my freshman year, most of the training and you know the multitude of languages I know now are all self-taught. Um, when I got my first job, it was a database job, and I didn't know anything about the databases. But I told them I could learn it. So I spent the month before I started the job and did some online courses and kind of trained myself up. So when I got to the job, I had some basic knowledge. And uh, from that point on, I was able to do the you know, on-the-job training and kind of pick it up fairly quickly. But this is really a field where there's so much out there. There's so much for you to, there's so many things for you to tap into. Like, you can just go to YouTube. There are tons of tutorials. And video tutorials are what work best for me. 
So I watch the video and just do what they did on the video and then try to break it and see how I can fix it. That's really how I got started. It's a lot of self-teaching. 